At rise, Quincy and Constance are kissing ardently. Perky ushers in Audrey, who takes one look at her parents' embrace, rolls her eyes and exits, Perky trailing along behind. Are you happy, my sweeting? Blissfully, my dearest. Lingering poverty means nothing. How agreeable it is, Constance, to revel in your affection before another day's labor engraving chamber pots. Would that we may always be this contented, beloved Quincy. <sighs> oh, no, my beloved. Sigh not in that melancholy fashion, lest my heart be shattered. What is amiss? I fret, my pet, about Audrey. Uh, beckon her, I beg. Audrey, do attend your father. Are you two finished? Audrey, we must parley upon the matter of your marriage. Father, I shall marry for my own inclinations, not yours. <clears throat> Daughter, I am resolute. You shall marry for love. I shall marry for money. Discover me an affluent suitor. Good, Audrey. Could you not benefit from the evidence of your parents' blissful state? I am doing so. My father betrothed me to the loathsome Baron Crude Oil. The beloved Quincy came for me, threw me upon the back of his steed, and, and galloped romantically away. We defied our parents' wishes and married for love. And that is precisely what I am going to do. And you shall marry for love? No, oh, I shall defy my parents' wishes. A gentleman for Mistress Audrey, a uh, Master Oliver Honeytongue. Oh, Master Honeytongue. So charming, so romantic. So bankrupt. We must attend him. Send him away, he's a dandy prat. <clears throat> Now, don't be so hasty, pet. Oliver is a master of more arts than just poetry, if you catch my meaning. How do you know? One hears tales. One is tale. Blessed angel mine, how I pine away at the merest whiff of thy presence sweet. Accept of me this lone but honest rose, whose graceful odour pales when matched with thine. One hundred roses, tactfully arranged, could not compare to this one. Make me whole by bartering this sole rose for thy soul. Graceful odour pales. How does the colour of an odour fade? I speak to thee of love, unchained by time. <laughs> you speak to me of fucking in penury. Well, it was considerate of you to pop by, but I remain uninterested. Then presently I die for thy neglect. An apothecary of discernment rare hath prepared for me a naughty poison, see? <laughs> cool maid or saviour, fly away with me in daylight forces, or in my coffin find me on the morrow. I live or die. Upon thy sacred words. You don't. You live or die upon that pill that is dissolving in your mouth. Love I importune. Hatred means my death. Thou art indifferent. I should die for thee? That's the spirit. <coughs> I die. Oh, I die. Thy beauty hath been as a rocky reef. My ship of love is dashed upon the crags. I die, oh, I die. The poison in my veins burns not so much as the poison in thy cruel eyes destroys. I die, oh, I die. Jesus Christ. I spoke to you of love. Audrey kneels beside Oliver and tenderly searches his pockets. Mistress Audrey! I know. It is like enough bootless, but he might have something. 
Oh, 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 it's Master Prowlfeck. Oh. Hmm. Turkey? Oh, sorry, pet, but oh my. Send him away. But I now. Master Proudpeck awaits. We entreated him to ascend at once. How fare you with Master Honeytongue? Oh, get Zooks, he's dead. How can you tell? Oh, horrible. Scant jesting, and not a farthing on him. Quickly, wife. We must dispense with him before Master Proudpeck arrives. They tote the body out a side door as Perky enters, breathless. Master Richard for Alfred. Hence, Perky. Oh, are you, mistress? Oh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> mistress Moonover. Richard? <laughs> Dick. Not before noon. Oh, I mean... Uh, Audrey, I love you. Let us elope. My horse awaits. Is this love language? No. He bends her backward, kisses her. That is love language. I speak it not. I offer you a lifetime of erotic translation. Let us away with haste. Unhand me, sir. Have you property and prospect of constant life? I have not. Have you mercantile interests in far-off lands? I have not. What do you have? Hm. Oh, that seems satisfactory. <laughs> no, I shall not follow in the life of my parents. All love and little food, a vault, and take that with you. You shall dine upon regret for years to come. As long as I eat. No, I say. Perky! Yes, mistress. Master Proudpeck is departing. Yes, mistress. I cannot in good conscience approve of your wardrobe, Perky. <laughs> Fine. This aged thing. Show Master Proudpeck the gate. Oh, with pleasure, mistress. <laughs> Perky takes a flying leap and wraps herself around Dick. They exit, kissing and fondling. Audrey pats down Dick's clothes, then throws them out the door. Well favored, but a pauper. He is here again. Sir Jack Dungtop. What a busy morning. I fear you must needs attend him, daughter. Oh, well, he has pots of money. Send him in. Oh, Audrey, no. Sir Jack is a bore. A scapegrace. A picaroon. The most tedious man in England. Good morrow. Oh. Sir Jack, it is lovely to see you again. Of course it is. <laughs> As Sir Jack speaks, Quincy and Constance, with forced smiles, struggle to stay awake. Audrey pinches herself. Mind you, I had the devil's own time getting here. Uh, my coach driver, Cyril, uh, the one who recovered from the pox. Cyril was tardy this morning, attending my needs. It was nearly an hour, no, two hours, well... Call it an hour and a half, to be fair. After I finished using that lovely chamber part you so artfully engraved for me, with love everlasting from your beloved lover, love, Dal Squatton, before the poxy bounder appeared with a dubious tale of a blind bulldog and a piece of cheese, Ropefort, I believe, the cheese, not the bulldog, although come to think of it, the dog's name is Cheddar. <laughs> Which is a wondrous coincidence, if you ask me. Very odd. Nonetheless, Cyril's story remained uncorroborated by the other servants. Or by the bulldog. Or indeed by the cheese. <laughs> I have forgotten my point. 
<laughs> May I have a private chat with your daughter? Indeed, no, Sir Check. A fellow with your reputation amongst the ladies? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we shall abide over here. Out of the way, Sir Jack. So good of you to see me, Ord. Uh, there is a reason for the visit I am paying you today. As you may know, or possibly not, although by now you certainly should know, my wife Fidelia passed away some years ago. A good seven years by my reckoning. Well, not necessarily a good seven years. They might be called an irksome seven years, or uh, an annoying seven years, or even a tedious seven years. I am not quite sure what was the cause of Bedelia's death, but I shall never forget how she passed on. The glazed, empty, despairing look in her eyes. How the days now linger on, and on, and on, and on. And on, 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 and on. To be brief, my dear, oh, if I may use so intimate term of endearment, will you marry me? Yes! Oh, gentle Jack, how long have I yearned for the day when you would make your honourable affection known to me? Mary, but you're a chatty one, aren't you? Come, my dear, we must plan our wedding. Oh, uh, but mayhap I should get your father's goodwill in the matter? You have it. Do not wake him. I shall leave them a note. We shall be oh so happy. There is an abundance of wildlife on my grounds. Squirrels and rabbits and robins and dogs and cats and parakeets and horses and pigs and turkeys and hedgehogs and giraffes. Wait a tick. Giraffes? No, mice. My cherished. No, mice doesn't sound right either. Oh, mother! Audrey has gone off with Sir Jack! Oh, Quincy! Then she shall marry for money? So I am afeard, my darling. Ah! Oh, look at <laughs> oh, oh, our poverty has ended. The years of pretense are over. At last! Real happiness is within our grasp. Hearken. <clears throat> Rest assured, my dear parents, that I shall acquit my obligations to you with dispatch and justice. Fear not. I shall be at pains to recompense your estate. Blessed child. I shall return before eventide to pack, feeling too jubilant to eat, I leave with you a gift of Sir Jack's, a box of savoury confections for your approval and enjoyment. <laughs> Our life of trial and ennui is at a conclusion. To Audrey. To Audrey.